Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of In My Opinion. My name is John. My name is Alester. And I'm Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have the real Ariana Grande here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> the one that you all see in videos and the one that is dancing around. That one is the stunt double. It's not real. <laughs> it's you. This is me. Yeah. This is real. This Hello, is everyone. My name, is, <laughs> my name is Zad and I'm the editor for Rice Media. <laughs> yeah, so like basically we did an episode last yes. week with him. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch it. Mm. It's a really, really good episode. Very, very, very insightful. Very insightful. But today we're going to be talking not just Rice Media, we're going mm. to talk about a bigger uh, bigger thing. La. Yes. But before I get into it, you know, plug our socials. Must always plug our socials. Overthink SG If you like everywhere. Ariana Grande. Yes. <laughs> right. If Please you like Ariana Grande. Follow us Overthink everywhere, especially on twitch.tv slash Overthink SG. Yes. And especially Telegram. T.me slash Overthink SG. You will join uh, our Telegram chat where you guys get to chat with people who are significantly nicer yeah. than us. Sometimes we put poll also. Yeah. And then you guys can also follow our TikTok and our Instagram. We'll be posting more content on there as well. Mm. So, yes, follow us everywhere. But let's get into today's topic. I mean, uh, Zad obviously is the editor of Rise Media, but like mm. just for people who are joining us this mm. week, can you like share a little bit more about what that entails? So, what I do on a daily basis, right, is mm. curate the content that goes onto the publication. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's generally the gist of it. La. The one sentence. Mm. All right. Yeah. And then whack the writer when the thing no good. Score people. The, it's not whack like I'll just like look at it and like <sighs> disapprovingly sigh so they yeah. won't self feel bad which is arguably worse for their mental health. <laughs> today, <laughs> what do you think is wrong with this article? <laughs> today, to, today, right? Today, one of my writer he was like writing something and then I was just taking a pic, you know. Then he's like, "Don't see lah. It's already so difficult for me to send you a draft. Then now, <laughs> then now you want me to you want to see what I'm writing it's as so, I'm typing it? Like, no. Like do exam for that. Yeah. <laughs> as if we never walk past <laughs> and send your paper then. <sighs> <laughs> What? <laughs> the childhood dreams all crushed in one moment. <laughs> but yes, uh, basically we're going when one big one big round just to mm. say that he is someone who is like um, I guess an uh, expert in the field that we are going to be talking yeah. a bit about today, or we a bit a bit about the censorship in Singapore, yeah. mm. or rather like maybe some of the media censorship yeah. in Singapore as well. So there's I think this is like a rather like big topic, very nuanced topic. There's a lot of different types of censorships or different types yeah. of content that they censor. Yeah. I think maybe we focus a little bit more on like the media side of things. Correct. And, like, and that being said also, I mean like, you know, I get that this is this is maybe a sensitive topic for some people. So I would like to remind you guys, please yes. be nice in the comments. Uh, don't uh, become a echo chamber of anger. Right? Yes. It's very easy to do that. But we always come here to these kind of conversations ready to have our minds changed. And of course, it's the Singapore government. If you are watching this, I know you are. <laughs> uh, they're definitely watching this because I'm on it. Oh, oh shit! Anyway, up, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. Um, it's not sweaty after that statement. <laughs> I yeah. will. I will ask my my political editor. Like, what do you think of the publication of the of the podcast? Uh, yeah, then I'll probably find out lah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but that's too late. Really. Oh, the, for sure, people. For sure, government people are listening to this. For sure. Very good. Oh my uh, god! I'm as in, sweaty. since your since the government people are listening to this, you want to come on the show? I yes, mean, please, please come Start on the show. Yeah, this couch will be if open for you. If you disagree with anything Zat says, come on the show. Come on the show and tell us why. Yeah, you should really get Bay Young, uh, Bay Young King on the show yeah, because Bay he just is watching this because week. he just recovered. Uh, oh. from nose cancer ma. Yes, 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 he just yes. finished his last radiation right mm. yeah and he is like a very uh, uh, it's a very it's a very intriguing figure mm. he's yeah. a very nice person I didn't yeah. interview him before mm. alright I mean Mr. 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 <laughs> Bray Yum Kang anytime 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 but yeah. today we have Arana Grande okay yes, okay, he's not here but basically uh, the question I posed to Zach when mm. I first pitched this thing is that do you think Singapore has like any has media freedom Whatever that means to you. Mm. So why don't we break that down? Because I mean, he gave me a very short and sweet answer, but I think it can be broken down. What was down. my answer? Uh? You so uh, forgot, right? I think you just said that it doesn't matter or something. Oh. <laughs> like, but that's a spoiler. But let's just break it down. <laughs> what does medium freedom mean to you? Yes. What does media freedom means to me? Uh? It yes. means that you are able to articulate your... You're able to articulate and justify your thought processes. Uh? Mm. Okay. So, so does it... Uh, to some people, media freedom means be able to say whatever they want. Does that mean the same to you? Like, like legit whatever the hell they want? No. Okay. You cannot say whatever the hell you want. <laughs> sure got consequences. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But should they, as in like consequences in the sense of like... Be- like people, you- people like to like to think that the mo- because there are consequences, mm. that means that it is, uh, there's a form of like policing, you know, so cannot. So, and, there's a re- and as a result of that, right, they associate that with lack of freedom. 
Mm. Yeah. But it's, you don't think that yeah. there's the lack of freedom? I don't know, man. I think it is a little bit. Eh. Okay. I'm of the camp that... <laughs> I'm of the camp, right? Oh my God. I feel like I'm going to hate one day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm of the, the camp, right? That we do have a little bit less media freedom than other. Mm. And I think that's a little bit undeniable because of like the laws in place yeah. in the first okay, place. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's 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 define like the, in the first episode we talked about definition of this yeah. sensationalism, right? So yeah. what defines media freedom? To me, uh, I think it's as long as you're not saying things that are like, okay, I, I'm just in, excluding like defamatory stuff or like falsehoods mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think you should be, in my head, media freedom means being able to say everything outside of that. So even if it's like critical of the government or like critical or whatever, you should be able to say it without consequence. I actually do not completely agree with you. Eh. Okay. I feel that in Singapore, we are, we are in a very unique position, right? That actually we can be critical about factual things that happen in Singapore, regardless yes. of whether it's public policy. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. So like in that sense, right, we do experience some level of... Uh, uh, um, freedom la, in that sense but like the issue that I think people that, that as in the thing that people take more issue at mm. right is whether uh, there should even be consequences to everything in the first place in terms of what we say okay you know what I'm saying so like instead of like things being regulated right they feel that there should be this uh, very wanton freedom of speech where you can t- really say anything you want and everything is pu- called a public opinion mm. Mm. so that means ah uh, you hypercritical of the government. You don't yeah. really substantiate what you say, right? Mm-hmm. But you shouldn't be punished. I think that's what people are thinking when it comes to media freedom. Eh? I think, right, honestly speaking, as much as I hate it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As much as I hate people who are like hypercritical for no reason, right? Mm. And like they don't substantiate properly. As long as you're not saying falsehoods, you're not saying as, as other things, right? I think you should be able to say it. Yeah. As much as I do not believe that I don't, I don't know if I if I have the wrong impression, but I feel that in Singapore, if you if things are factual, that means they are case yeah, studies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, of course. And then you say they won't like ah, they won't like. be like why you say the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what I mean. But I think that is for individuals. If right. you think about like media media outlets, because like whenever you start like a media outlet, there is like a law, like there's a licensing thing to uh-huh. do it, right? I don't know. I don't think the licensing thing say they cannot be anti government lah. I don't think they say it that way lah. But I think when there's a licensing thing. The pressure is kind of, uh, in my opinion, the pressure mm-hmm. is kind of uh, like subtle and more implied. So mm. as much, I read this I read this journal article before. I think it summed out quite well my opinion about this. But it's like, I, I believe that we have probably more media freedom than we care to admit. Mm-hmm. That we probably are more free than most people think. Mm. But at the same time, uh, the fact that there's like the out the the ex- the maybe the un- invisible pressure felt by like right writers or journalists mm. maybe speak for like a bigger problem at hand or like right. maybe it's not as free as we would like it to be. Right. It's not as bad as people will make it out to be, but it's probably not as free as we would like it to be. That's I think where I stand for me personally with mm. regards to media freedom. Mm. So I agree that. You know, Singapore government, don't hang me. I think it's fair. I think it's fair. I don't, I'm not saying that you're really, really coming down and say, hey, you, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> why you, why, why you, you like that? Why you say us? <laughs> I don't, I don't say that, okay. I think they don't. What I'm saying is that just the licensing thing, the fact that like, you know, overseas, um, overseas media need to have like a Singapore stakeholder. Like, okay, basically they need to have a Singapore stakeholder in like media, uh. media outlets and stuff like that. You need to get a license. Yeah. And the license uh-huh. depends on the government. Mm. That is tough. I think the fact that they just have that is enough to have invisible pressure. And people might be a and, little bit more cautious than they should be. And that's the censorship. That is, it's like a self-censorship almost. Right. The government doesn't need to censor because we were self-censor. Like they never say no, but you know dangerous. Yeah. The fact that like we know that there are certain things, right, that we shouldn't probably cross. Mm. Just that fact that we know that, right, mm. means we probably self censor So it's like, got beehive, but we never say you cannot touch. Yeah, correct. Uh, but, never say you cannot shake the tree, but got a lot of bees. <laughs> it's right? Like, it's like, <laughs> maybe there's no bees. Maybe uh, the bee might be imaginary. Uh, but a lot of beehives. But a you lot. think there's a lot of beehives. <laughs> It might be imaginary, but I think uh, the self-censorship is bigger than the actual government censorship, right, in my opinion. Right. But the fact that the government hasn't uh, like has this like laws in place that perpetuates that that self like that self-censorship, mm. right? I think it's a big it's a problem that we should solve. 
was I know your opinion is very different from this. <laughs> not not necessarily. I feel like when you're talking about media freedom, right? We are talking about we have to be very clear. Are we talking about like traditional media freedom? Yeah. Are we talking about like new age media media freedom? Because if you're talking about like new age media freedom, mm. freedom like Telegram, right? If there is like excessive like media clamp down uh, in Singapore, right? Groups like SG COVID La Kopi will not exist. Neither will Healing Divide. Mm. Neither will all these like, anti vex uh, all these anti vex group. Oh, won't won't exist one. If mm. you want to say like you know it's clamp down, uh. I personally, right, like whenever we do like social political pieces, right, uh, we we try to be very objective. So I always say, don't. I always tell my writer, don't be so uh uh one sided, yeah. right. Look at it from both sides of you because you want people to treat you seriously. You mm, want people to look mm. at you and go and and think like, oh, this is this, this but not just uh, bashing the government. I'm not interested in bashing the government. I have zero interest in bashing the government. I have interest in talking about policies. Mm. Some policies are good. Some policies are great. Some mm. policies require a little bit more. Mm, maybe we should really relook, relook this, uh, uh, this, this portion. Mm. But the way the government operates, right, is that if there is something that they cannot do, because they, uh, lack of resources, or maybe they are not very well equipped, or they're not knowledgeable, because we cannot think of the government as like an all-knowing entity, yeah, la. They are sure. only as good as the people, the members that uh, make the, up the staff and the and the staffers and all the the officers that make up the uh, uh they make that that make up the ministry. Mm. So if, for instance, right, you want to talk about, uh, drug abuse mm. within the gay community, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? There is no department in the uh, drug rehabilitation section of the government, right? That caters specifically to this, yeah, to mm. this department, uh. to this So yeah, so but that but that means that does it mean that they are just ignoring it? It's not. It's just just because they're not just well, they're just not well equipped to have that resource, right? So that's when they reach out to community groups and ask, like, you know, can you help us? Or you you are helping them. Okay, let me support you, mm. right? So. In in that sense, I think uh I am more uh interested in talking in criticizing policies. I mean, if 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 people if uh 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 people like uh Kristen Han, uh Tam Pan Jin, I think uh, Pang Pang Tam Jin mm. can like go on Facebook, you know, and write all these like long soliloquies about like the government, right? Mm. And they're not like the next day like immediately arrested, right? I think okay. Okay, okay. That's yeah. true, that's yeah. true. I think I think I think what people mistake for like media freedom, right, is that when you read Straits Times, right, and then you see like uh uh oh, of course they're gonna talk well about this. Of mm. course they're gonna speak well about this policy. Mm. Of course mm. they're gonna only publish the good news, the good things. But even now, even even now, right, you can see the marker being shifted. Like even last time during the general election 2020. D, right, yeah. you can see that you can see that the way uh Straits Times uh position the stories right is you can see the change yeah. slowly happening uh, uh because that is what uh the readers demand mm. they cannot for they cannot ignore it really so if by media freedom you mean traditional media not being a uh, uh, traditional media being like like completely effusive about the government right yeah yeah. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. Uh. Like, it, and that has been the way for the past God knows how many years. But you, but you also stand that like, doesn't mean that tr- just because the traditional media cannot exactly do it, that other media outlets can still yeah, do it. La. Exactly. Okay, okay, yeah. that's true, that's true. So you see like other publications, they can say, okay, but I, like, I, I, Rice says things. Mm, mm. But at the same time, right. like, do you feel like the fact that you have to be like, like every time you publish an article, you have to go through like your political Advisor. Uh, advisor, yeah. yeah. Because I want to be clear, I want to make sure that uh my argument right is solid. Mm. No holes. Okay. But do you feel do you feel like the fact that you had to, or like you feel like I don't think scare is the right word, but you feel like the the a little bit like NC around this sort of thing. It's right? it's more like uh it's not uh, it's not for fear of like offending, you know. Mm. It is actually really to make sure that all my bases are being covered. So that there is no chance, right, that when this article goes up, right, people will say like, take it down. Because mm. you're not telling the truth. Mm. Yeah. There are ah. no false, there are no falsities, right, in the articles that we publish. Yeah. We try as much, so we, we make sure, that's, that's why it takes so long, mm. right? We try as much as possible to make sure that the, the, the facts are all co- parsed correctly. We are objective, we cover all, we, we, we cover all areas and then we publish it. Mm, mm. Yeah. So we don't, we don't, we don't, uh, 
uh, go by like, oh, this is such a horrible thing, these yeah, things, yeah, yeah. and then publish. Then you're too guided by anger. Then, then, then that doesn't make it very objective. Then what is the difference between us and, say, the online citizen? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is this is a very good point because this is a uh, 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 it's not necessarily about censor uh, censorship anymore. Mm. Yeah, right. It's more of like making sure that your facts are correct, but not because not out of fear of a government taking down, mm. right? But more out of fear that people say that you're wrong, regardless of who they are. Mm. Like people poke holes in your argument. Mm. Oh, like not solid. integrity, la. Yeah, mm. like people can poke holes in your argument uh, in ways that are that make it too vulnerable that you cannot stand. Right, then that's then it becomes problematic in her, internally. Mm. Right, mm-hmm. regardless of who this person is, you can write about government, you can write about anyone, ma. But like, I think uh, in terms of like invisible pressure, like what Alistair bring out earlier, do you feel that 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 such thing exists in the digital realm? Oh, definitely lah. Yeah. But it doesn't help, it doesn't help that, you know, mm. the government has like, uh, you know, arrested like people for like holding cards, you know. Mm, mm, so, mm. It, that, that, that mm. fear, right, is perfectly understandable. There's that <clears> pressure, <throat> right? Yeah. Even though like, like logically speaking, you know that like, if whatever you put out as factual mm. and whatever you put out as objective, you should be okay. Yeah. But like, there's this like invisible pressure, which is something that I feel is indicative of a larger problem. Mm. Uh, perhaps, uh, if, yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. Mm. Uh, but that is, I feel like that is just something that you have to learn to live with. Yeah, get, get, get on with it, law. <laughs> really, really. So, yeah. do you think it's that big of a deal? Because a lot of people make it out to be a very, very big deal. Like we always, we, we this, we have been discussing so much about whether we have media freedom, but like. We haven't discussed does it matter? I think because people want uh I feel like a lot of people want absolute freedom. Mm. Mm. Absolute eh. Okay. Yeah. No yeah, whole I I mean. part one. <laughs> that means uh uh people, people people who are uh anti LGBTQ, right, can go to like LGBTQ pages right, and say like, oh, uh, we're gonna bomb you. Or, or you, you're going pin out tomorrow or we're going to go there and then we're going to do this to you. Mm, they can mm. actually say that absolute freedom but that's like the paradox of what's that word? Uh? It's the paradox of I, I'll get back to you. Yeah, mm. but, but <laughs> yeah, but the, the the whole idea of like absolute freedom, right? It's so enticing. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because it gives you uh, free will, right? To do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. To say whatever the hell you want right? and nobody will nobody will uh, come after you. Mm. But I don't think that's uh, logical. Uh. I just don't think that's logical. It is easy for me to, to come up with articles, right, and attack politicians. Yeah. I'm sure, right? so, I'm sure that's like most people's like almost default at yeah. this point. Like, oh, this Lawrence Wong is like this. Oh, Ong Hee Kang is like this. You can see it on, on all the Telegram channels. There's so mm. many of them. They say like, mm. oh, look, look at this Kenneth Mark. Huh? Who does he think he is? That kind of stuff, right? Mm. But, do, do they say that? Oh, they, they do. Can they say that? They can. They're not closed. Okay. They're not <laughs> shut. all over Facebook also. So if they can yeah. say like, Laura, I think Lawrence Wong like, has, a, the, has the, a cunning the face. Most and common, they can. Oh, for real? The most yeah. common oh, punching shit. back has always been Josephine Teo. I mean, mm. right? people always wait. Yeah, and we do mm, say this, so we talk about Josephine Teo as well, right? Yeah. But now as we mature, right, we're trying, I'm trying not to attack politicians because politicians, right, uh, the things that they say, right, the speeches that they do, right, is not purely written by them. It's written by a whole team oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of people, of staffers, mm. right? And of course, they are the ones who have to deliver it. So my, I will take issues with the policies, Instead of like the person, or instead of the the, the bearer, mm. the bearer of the news, right, means very little to me. Mm. So yeah. you, so you think that by like tackling the, I mean you you went through it in a video call with me, but like yeah. tackling the policies and then you are still kind of talking about the issue at hand. Yes, in fact, you're talking. You are more. I objective. am talking only about the issue at hand. Yeah, you just remove the human part of yes. it that might be interpreted wrongly or yes. might be like construed as like being offensive or yeah. anything yeah. like that. La. Yeah. Do you think that? You should be able to be offensive to the person. Why? I'm not. I don't do that with like normal. I don't do that with Kenny. That's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. Why am I doing it with this person? Even like with the Venture one, right? I'm not yeah, doing yeah. it. I'm not. We're not evil or like mean to like the owner. Why am I doing it to a politician? <laughs> mm, that's mm. true. That's true. Yeah. I have to be impartial, like impartial throughout the board, ma. I wonder when, yeah. okay, I mean like there's one thing to say like, oh, why would I do it? Like it's, there's no point in doing it. But as now, it's not like mutually exclusive with whether or not you should do it. Does it make sense? So like, 
for example, like of course you shouldn't smoke, right? But yeah. like you know, cause it causes you cancer, whatever. Mm. But should smoke be smoke smoking should should they be banned? Should you be a, be given the freedom to smoke? I think that's a different question. Does that make sense? Because logically speaking, you know that something is probably not the right thing to do. Mm. Mm. But doesn't mean you should not be able to do it. Oh yeah. So like in this in this case about like But being doesn't offensive, that tie into what he mentioned about absolute freedom? Mm-hmm. Which is being able to do whatever you want but no consequence. Do you feel like then, then mm-hmm. this is exactly the point that we've always been rallying against for the wild west of the internet. Yeah, I agree. Because it will devolve into wild westness, mm. which is not necessarily what we want in a society. And I think we have seen that unfold in yeah. Parliament recently, right, with Raisa Khan. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Yeah, I said it. You said it. Yeah. Oh no. The wild westness has I mean, people, made it into, people into can the say cabinet. Like, oh, you know, you must understand where she's coming from. I do. I completely understand where she's coming from, but you have privileges. Yeah. You have privileges and you must be able to use those privileges properly. Mm. And there's consequences of the things yes. you say. La. Yeah. And yeah. and and I mean I'm not I'm not trying to like simp PAP la, right? Oh God, I use the word sim correctly, right? Yeah, 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 ah, okay, yeah. Okay. But yeah. when you look at she how when you look at how Indrani Raja approach like this thing, right? Wow, masterclass, <laughs> masterclass in empathy, mm. but still like nagging, ah, but empathy. Wow, brilliant. Mm. Yeah, I wanted to say just now what yeah. what what when what absolute freedoms uh and uh what absolute freedom brings across right is yeah. the paradox of tolerance. What does that mean? Uh, have you heard of it? No, no I have not. So, the paradox of tolerance, right, means that, is, it, is that the paradox of tolerance or the paradox of intolerance? Right, okay, right. It's okay. either lah. Uh, yeah, people in Twitch, you can let me know. Mm. <laughs> I'm counting on you, people. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's like, uh, I have to tolerate your opinion even yeah. though it's wrong. Then be- so, I will give you the space to yeah. say like all this, all this uh, paradox of tolerance. Yeah. yeah. Paradox of tolerance. Mm. Yeah. So, I, so, so I will give I will give you the space to say all these like bad bad things, right? But then you yeah. say, but I this is my freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. So I have to tolerate you, law. But if I don't tolerate you, right, then mm. that means that is it is freedom of speech really real? Yeah. Mm. That means so, but then the things that you're saying is damaging, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's yeah. damaging. But if I stop you, then I am uh I the I am this is an affront to the whole idea of freedom, freedom of, speech. of speech. Yeah, yeah. Well, but this then, is the entire situation in the United States right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, would you say the United States have media freedom in that sense of like total freedom? Because yeah. they, they still have consequences, right? So, so someone said that where uh, unlimited correct unlimited tolerance lead to the disappearance of tolerance. That's what it means. Yes. Okay. That's a bit of wow, that's a bit that we get around. Yeah. But it's such an interesting uh, an thing, interesting, right? Yeah. yeah. So everyone demands this freedom, 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 right? But uh you don't know how to nurture it, la, how to carefully hold it in your hands. Right. Mm. Hold it carefully. It's if it's given to you, hold it carefully. So now Rice Media is given like the freedom. I've never been asked to take down an article, you know, by the government. And you okay. So you feel like there is like more than enough yes. space given there to you. There is some yeah. level of freedom there. Yeah. Mm. And like, and like, I think what Zah is trying to say is that with whatever is given to you, you must treat it like the privilege that it is mm. rather yeah. than like, why not more? As, especially mm. right when, when you doing, all, I do all these things, right? If I can, if I write an art, if my writers write an article, right, that is so brilliant, that is so beautifully parsed out, right? And then someone from the ministry reads it and they go like, hey, I didn't think about that there. Eh maybe we should consider that point as well. So, it, because they look at the article as being very critical and being very objective, right? They don't mm. look at it as like, oh, this person is just angry. You know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the same. Like, when we look at articles that are too angry or when we look at comments, right, that is like too attacking, too right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, we're like, we don't, we're, not, we're, not, we're not going to take you seriously. So, I yeah. don't want that because what Rice Media stands for, right, is that we want to initiate change. So mm. if we can initiate change through the critique of policies and saying like, oh, this is what we should be doing, mm, blah, 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 mm. right? and then someone, when they, someone someone in the ministry reads it and go like, okay, you know what? Let's consider that. Let's consider this thing that they have said. If what Rice Media says is what the people on the ground are saying, right? let's consider this seriously. Then we have done the job that we are set out to do. The responsibilities that we have as a media is done. 
I'm mm. not just here to give you good news. Straits Times is here to give you like, this is the government policy. This is the press release. This is the information, 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 information. Then, but then I'm not here to do that because I'm not a news a news outlet, right? I'm here to mm. create change. You yeah, mm. have to do a country part of it that yeah. the Straits Times probably will not do. La. Yeah, or they, they, they have to like tow, la. they have to tow the government line. Or they cannot mm. say like bad things, even though they try mm. a little bit. La, sometimes but they, they do. Say. To their credit, I think they do yeah, sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, so, so the younger generation of journalists, right, they're trying yeah. to like push the envelope a bit, right? And that's why I say the, the younger journalists are like the hope of the future. La. Oh, wow. mm. I mean, not to not not to be so aspirational, right? But <laughs> yeah, if everybody thinks that way, then I think it'd be it'd be good. Mm. Like Mothership, for instance, right? We know Mothership is I don't know whether you all know this. I think they started out. Okay, so Mothership is like backed by uh the country, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Huh? Wait, what's for real? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Do you, yeah. Oh. How is this is, breaking is, news? Are we like is this to... something that we should know? I don't know. <laughs> I thought everyone knew. Uh, I thought everyone knew. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm I think going with it, guys. We're going with yeah, it. Let's go. Yeah. So, so like, uh, they. Uh, so essentially, okay. You're going research now, okay? Uh, so, uh, uh. so mothership, uh, has like the like 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 the the country has a stake in mm. uh, in in mothership because of its reach, right? Because mm-hmm. its reach is so great, right? Yeah. But even mothership is trying to push the envelope by writing about Chinese privilege. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you can see that things are things are getting a little bit better. But I think if you are going to like push, if you're going to be like very angry and very combative about it, right, then of course there's no chance, lah. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever like wish you had re- you could write an article but was stopped because of like either Never. the invisible pressure or government? Never. 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 So everything that you wanted to write, you had the freedom and space yeah. to write it. it. It's always more. It's always like I will stop myself or I will stop the writer only because. Uh, I don't think the arguments are either cogent or kosher enough. Can you explain those two no, words? Coming back to kosher, uh, why why uh, kosher though? Kosher as in in what sense? So it is not uh, the opinion, right? Or the, the, the critique, right? It's not sound. Mm. Mm. It's not robust enough. So it's just to, a journalistic integrity thing. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it needs to be very well thought out. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It cannot be very surface level. Ah, you know, I keep pushing, pushing, okay, pushing, okay, pushing, okay. pushing. Like, why do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Why do you say this? Right. Yeah. And and critic, critic without uh constructive uh without any like constructive uh, feedback, for instance, right? It's just Saying whatever you saying want. Whatever you want yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And I did say this to uh, to my writers today. I said anger is the enemy of democracy. Ah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Because you keep getting angry, 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 right? But you're not going to move the needle, you know? Like it doesn't help to like change minds. It doesn't help. doesn't yeah. help to, to influence you're, you're, anyone. All, all, all you're doing, right, is further dividing. You further ah. divide like you, me, you, me. Agreed. But Agreed. You're not trying to address the main issue at hand. Mm. Yeah. So that's what I think. Uh, anger is the is the enemy of democracy. This is the message that we that we resonate with as yeah, well as, we a, do. as a channel. Yeah. Like yeah. we try to be like because, as objective as possible. Yeah, because like if people don't come with logical points mm. or actual actionable points and you just come here and be angry, right? Yeah. It doesn't go anywhere. Mm. Yeah. I also I mean I, I know I start off the whole thing by saying that like, I think that we have still a ways to go and I think my biggest my biggest criticism isn't really like a specific law mm. because I think most of the laws I can understand why it's there like, mm. and I get it like. it's just that I think the invisible pressure is the hardest thing and I don't know whether it's the government's fault it might not even be their fault it might be just us it might be just us in our heads and like overthinking everything right and spooked that, by ghosts yeah it might, yeah. Be, it might just be us spooked by ghosts like yeah. it might not be have any legs to it so it I know I've said that like, oh, maybe the government can try to solve it. But you know, to a certain extent, maybe it's it's us also. La. I remember we had to upload an article, uh, article a video before uh, with uh, Subash, I think with the Michael Worker episode. Mm. I went through that video like at least five times before I uploaded mm. it because I was so scared. And I was mm. trying to like make sure that like, nothing seditious was but, but you see like, okay, so to, to talk about, say for, 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 for the migrant worker thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We wrote something about it. Mm. We wrote something about like uh why uh why are migrant workers' lives considered lesser? Yeah. Yeah. So if you yeah. read or you read carefully, right, it is 
We, it is within the the, the, the the conversation and discussion that the parliament is having about migrant workers' rights and yes. migrant workers mm. taking care of migrant workers. Mm. Yes. We talked about like hospital beds. We talk about like hospital beds not uh uh, uh they're not being en- they're not being enough hospital beds, right? Yeah. And it is an indictment on like the the on, on the part of the Ministry of Health, right? But this is the truth. I'm not saying I'm not picking it out of my ass. I'm talking to nurses. Mm. Nurses are nurses are saying to me, like, oh, this is what's happening. Oh, we're gonna quit. Oh, like you look at this ward, these da, 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 all these things. These are all the truth. But I'm not saying that it is absolutely like the government's fault. Because yes. they are trying. I feel yeah. like people people who critic, 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 right? They don't realize that we are all facing the same like unknown enemy. La. But we are just a bit like in Singapore, through Singapore style, right? I think we are being more we are being overly, overly cautious. Mm. Yeah. Because that has what that that has been what has uh set us on this on this path uh to independence for a very long time. Look, uh a lot of things that have happened in Singapore, right, in the world, right, like uh, economic crisis, la, mm, uh, mm. all these things, right, these are, all these things have precedent. It yeah. has happened before, uh, they, they know how to settle it, succeed. Yes. So there's yes. a blueprint, right? Yeah. But when you look at something like COVID, that it's like, it constantly changes, right? So now, now, mm. now you look at the government and you see, okay, now I want to see what, I want to see what y'all do. I want to see how you can solve this problem because there's no precedent. There's no precedent, yeah. yeah we've never had a lockdown. We've never had like airport shut, nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. So what are you going to do? Yes, can we judge them based on all these things that they're doing? Yes, we can. Especially mm. if we're saying like, oh, we pay you so much, you know, you should be able mm. to solve so you should be able to solve this problem. But then, look, last year, I think uh, last year or this year, our economy grew. Mm. Yeah, and and then and then and then when people online say like, oh, look at uh Europe la, Denmark, all this uh, wow, they all open already, and then all oh, they're shut again, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we are still like we are still going around in five. I can still have this podcast with you. Mm. That's true. Yeah, we still eat like nice bento sandwiches. Yes, we can eat. We can go outside. You know all these things uh. So mm. I sometimes I feel like very sad law when I look at like like what the government has to go through when it comes to this COVID nineteen. I'm not a government sympathizer, but I feel like. We sometimes need to give them a bit of a break, lah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And yeah. once again, I will press whatever criticism I say is that like it might not even be their fault in the first place. Yeah. As much as I think that, uh, there's some okay. I do think that like the barrier for entry for like uh like a like a publishing site or mm. something like Rise Media to mm. get into it right to get the license to that you need to have first of all like a certain backing mm. uh, lawyers. I mean, you have to be big enough. You be big enough to get there in the mm. first place. Mm. Having that barrier of entry kind of sucks. But the fact that we can have be two idiots on the internet and have a YouTube channel and have a podcast and mm. talk about these issues, I think that's alleviate a little, a little bit. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of the things that are in my head about like, oh, like I'm a bit scared to say these things or I can imagine some writers are also a little bit scared. Maybe not so much in rights media, mm. but maybe in the Straits Times, they are a little bit more cautious. Um, It might just be in our heads. Who knows? But no one has been dare, daring enough to like push it a bit too far. Mm. No, everyone's just like kind of- like, must eat, right? And look what happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> Amos, he, Amos he just didn't, didn't just push it too far. He eaten it out of the I window. Mean, you think about it. Amos E is what happens when you have when you absolute freedom and everything. Yeah. He eaten it out of the window, lah, to be fair. Like he didn't just like push it. And I think I think I think what's important to know, right, is that community, right? Smaller small communities in Singapore, right, will be the one pushing for the change. Uh. That's true. Uh. Yeah. And it is happening. You can see it happening. Mm. Like if you if you look at places like T Project, uh, you look you look at like uh, uh organizations like T Project, Ugachaga, all these things, right? They are doing they are taking so much strides, like they're having so much strides with helping the 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 minority groups, people like people who are less uh who are a bit more disadvantaged, people uh, trans- uh homeless transgender people, mm. you know, giving them home, right? Where do you think all this rental, like all this space, someone has to help them, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think mm. um I mean. In that sense, I guess the government has been quite uh, forgiving. Not they, forgiving. They, 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 they know, alone. yeah, I feel like the government is very practical. They mm. know what they can do and they know, they know what they cannot do. For mm. the things that they cannot do, they they will give resources to community groups to help. Mm. So like the migrant worker situation, right? They give uh, a lot of resources to, I don't know whether, I don't know whether it's a lot, but I know for a fact that they do uh, uh, recognize that places like home la transient workers count to TWC two right all this right they know that these people are doing the work so they give a bit of resources to help them lah yeah. because it is they know the people on the ground better than the government people ma. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, Don do you have any thoughts uh okay I'm I mean initially 
one of the points that I feel quite neutral about, which I think is interesting because most people will take a stance on it, right? Is whether the government in general is uh is doing a good job or a bad job. Mm. Most of the time on the internet, I feel that like people are very quick to want to select a camp. Yeah. Right. And feel that like there has to be a right or wrong answer. Yeah. Right. So if we if we're talking about things like censorship in the media, right, people want to think that government doing bad job or government doing good job. Mm. Yeah. Right. I, I feel that like I'm neutral to that. What I'm more like I, what I feel more like sort of like enlightened by and 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 it's a new a, a new train of thought for me, right? Is that like in terms of the behavior of people on the internet, mm-hmm. right? The fact that we come to the conclusion that the fact that people I would say X number of people on the internet come to a conclusion that like there is censorship on the internet, the government is... Blah, 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 yeah. Right? It's interesting because I can't quite logically come to a conclusion about what the origin point is. Yes. Yeah. I think it's mostly like stories on the past, yeah, but maybe like, some legends. Where whatever. did this sentiment come from? You mm. see? And how did it become such a huge in the huge monster in that sense, right? Yeah. That people can no longer overcome it. Like they're former, yes, 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 yes. The government confirmed it's like a big, big brother, big brother, big brother. You know, that kind of... And they might not even be big brother. Is the point. Yeah, but like, yeah. that's why it, it, it suddenly like sort of dawned upon me that it's a little bit more interesting to think about like, how did these people even come... How did, how did people even come to the conclusion in the first place, right? That the government is oppressing uh, media freedom. Not mm. Maybe... I use oppressing in, in, a, in a funny context here because suppressing doesn't f- seem to quite describe the full anger and outrage that these mm. people feel. Mm. Yeah. Right? I I, think, how did it originate and where did it come from? I think it was like from stories on the past. Like I think there are a lot of stories in the past where like journalists have come out and said that like yeah. they're being censored. Yeah. So like uh, operations like the the one the, the one you all learn in social studies mm-hmm. the coal coal stone coal yeah, store like yeah, yeah, operation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh like people being sent uh for like solitary confinement detainment mm-hmm. all these things right yeah. Then yes you you do have that kind of like there's that past like history behind it and then mm. I mean some of the laws have changed over time mm. it has become I would say more lenient mm. as a child but some of the laws still still stay in place if you want to be a big publishing company yeah. you need to go through the government no but like the laws are put in place not to protect the government per se right yeah, they're yeah. just more to protect the in fact in a very roundabout way it feels like censors, censorship but it's to protect the citizens. Mm. Yes, correct. But I think that the problem is that the law could have been interpreted in a different way because like of the past you history. don't let. Like a, you don't let. So you are, yeah. as a rebellious child, you're like, why don't let? Yeah. <laughs> and plus, <laughs> with the history, I guess people, I guess, it, you put it that way, it makes it sound stupid. Or not. It yeah. sounds stupid, huh? but does it work? Why you don't let? <laughs> <laughs> but, I think, but I think it's like based on the past history like a and child. the way people can interpret the law a mm. bit differently uh-huh. that's, that might have given rise to uh, maybe that, that's why I say the invisible pressure but right. at the same time like then we come back then the, the question that I posed just now is it really truly a government's fault that we interpret it wrongly who the fuck knows right it might not be it mm. might be our fault we might be in and our heads of this which is why you test so. <laughs> you test you just test like the yeah. water slowly you push you push your envelope slowly, slowly, then see like, is this permissible? Is this permissible? Do I get a bit of like, nervous, right, when articles go out, even though like, it is fully, fully fleshed out, right? Yes, yeah. of course. But, every time it's like, left alone, right, I'm like, oh, like this can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's, what else can I try? You know, oh then try, again. I push a bit, oh, like this can. <laughs> yeah. So it's always about trying to do that, la, but without, yeah. uh, without capitalizing on like sensationalism. La. Right. Of course. Yeah. Which brings back to the last week's, po- last week's are, episode. That yeah. means there are two kinds of defiant children. <laughs> yeah, correct. Right? Yeah. There are two kinds. The, yeah. young, yeah. the, the smarter sibling and the slightly less smart sibling. Mm. Yes. The smarter sibling, oh, like this can. Uh. Uh, the slightly, why cannot? <laughs> why cannot? <laughs> yeah, because, because honestly, you never know what the, uh, what, what the gov- how the government will change its mind. Ah. You never know. And like maybe they look at the they they they, they look at the climate like hey, okay, maybe we should be a bit more relaxed uh, about these things. Uh. Okay, like, just let it be, like, just let it be. Like. We never know. Mm. Yeah, so we always have to try and push, 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 push a bit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I want I, I do hope that like if the government does manage to think of something that can alleviate the invisible pressure that yeah. I talk about, the fact that 
Like mm. so that to the point where like you know we won't be as scared uploading and uh yeah, yeah, yeah. this video I'm gonna be fucking scared to upload by the way but like <laughs> just, like just why no, not nothing you okay, you'll, you'll be fine it's not fact, okay, you'll be fine I mean, the fact that like I'm scared right yeah I but you are scared to... by everything lah hey, so you can't okay. say <laughs> <laughs> I mean uh, I wonder if the government can do anything about it I don't know either like a campaign or some shit like I don't know figure it out but, but the like, thing is like the also kit. maybe also maybe like not the immediate priority. So it becomes difficult Maybe, yeah. to address with urgency. Yeah. Or rather, address in a manner that makes us feel that it was done with urgency. Yeah. Maybe. Right? Maybe like, yeah. I guess a campaign. Like they got a list of things. Man. Maybe this one, number 53. To be honest, I wouldn't, yeah, it will probably be number 53 for a while. Like, yeah. For now. <laughs> for now. What if something happens tomorrow and then we're like, uh, oh, you know move what? up to number six. Yeah, we have to we have to prioritize this now. Like, it's <laughs> yeah. too much. Uh. We have to figure it out. Yeah. We have to like tell the citizens, hey, everyone come yeah. fuck down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if for instance, right, uh leading up the election, right, the the, the government do their 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 due diligence and they found out found out that the, the, the hot topic, the hot button topic, right, is uh press freedom, right? They will They'll probably they'll probably address it. Like. Yeah, they probably do something about it, you know. That's true, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Because it is there is like it is it's the same as when people ask like how come we how come the government don't want to repeal 377A? Mm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh and I always tell people because there's no economic uh incentive. incentive. Repeal for what? <laughs> but mm. if Spotify, Google, Twitter, right, all these China companies say like, hey, sorry, I cannot set up shop here. Because, because my workers are like some of them are they feel oppressed. Uh, they they like they like, like, like they're coming with their partners, right? And they don't feel very safe here, so I cannot lah. Uh, then tomorrow change. No. Yeah. Because Actually, that's true. Interesting. Yeah. Because the government is very economic driven. It's clear what we are yeah, economic yeah, driven. Yeah, it's, very, yeah. it's, very, it's very true. It's like why we will never ban smoking. Mm, but these are small tax. Uh, so uh, no, but like the, the the whole like vibe as in in terms of like Vice taxes and and the way we make uh, money, ma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are things that will not change, man. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, la, or at least not overnight, lah. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe in like you know, maybe like two weeks after we are, we upload yeah. this podcast, then suddenly like media freedom is the next big thing. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Probably. Maybe. I mean, I've been writing about this since like my A level GP paper. Mm. So like you know, things hasn't exactly changed for much since so, then. So I think I think I think to. To summarize la, right? Yeah, to yeah. summarize la, my point of view, right? Yes. Is that I don't I am more interested in policies. Mm. Than the people. Than the people, yeah. And do you think that more people should do that? They should, but they don't know how to do it because they are ah. not like well read. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so they can fight, 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 fight. But they don't know how how you're going to counter counter this. Mm. So you say like, oh, uh, a, a GST hike to 9%, uh, 9%, right? 10%, 10, 9%? I think it's 9. 9%, nine. right? Yeah. Nine to, uh, a GST hike to 9%. Oh, that's not good, you know, it's blah, 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 all these things, right? But you have to come up and say like, be be, be very clear with like your arguments. Why is it good? Why is it bad? Mm-hmm. For me, for instance, mm. what I'm curious about when it comes to the GST thing, right, is uh, in parliament, Indrani said, uh, the G, there, there's like uh, incentives and rebates that's going to be given to the entire country, right? Mm. Such that the ordinary citizen, uh, ordinary uh, citizens, right, will only feel the impact of uh, GST after five years. Yeah. Then the lower income will feel, only feel after 10 years. Mm. Yeah. So my question is, how you know? <laughs> is it, a, oh, that's a good question actually. Yeah. Like, so now, I, so now I'm, I'm looking looking out for it on uh, during the budget right on February eighteenth, yeah. yeah. and I want to see like where are these numbers, right? So mm. I want to look at it and see like oh okay maybe this is maybe they are right, right? And if they are right, and I can say like oh, and and I can see from the numbers and say okay this one goes to the elderly or this one goes to the lower income family. This goes yeah. to this goes to this right. Then I'm like okay then 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 that makes sense. Then that is an article that I want to write because mm. I want people to see that. They they are not just saying they're not it. talking out. Yeah, yes. but but yeah. but 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 the thing is, if no one demands it, right, then they will probably like. But no one asks for it, less so okay, law. Uh. Yeah, so I want to ask for it. I want to go and research it and look and and look at it and see where it, and see where all these numbers are coming from and whether it makes sense. I mean, it's cool that like you yeah. can do that in the first place. Mm. I mean, I'm. Just, uh, there's of course we're talking about like the we have talked about like the the freedom extreme end of like mm, let's say the states mm. but there's also the other end where like it's like completely zero like media freedom mm. 
where like uh that shit could have been significantly worse lah. Mm. So I think it's also good to put it into context like that. In fact, you can still write the things that we want to write. Yeah, it's just you. you I guess you just need to do your due diligence and yeah. everything will be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, any closing thoughts, John? No, I just suddenly we need to struck <laughs> with uh with this um thought about privilege. Mm. Right, the fact that uh now it suddenly makes me feel that like the fact that we can be even discussing about media free freedoms is a form of privilege because uh not everyone will even have the privilege to be able to understand that we need to research to back these things up. Mm. And that's why these are the very, un- sometimes they are very unfortunately influenced by by things on the internet and potentially say, uh, fall down this rabbit hole of sedation that eventually hits a nerve with the government and then it further feeds their confirmation bias about the government and be like, yes, there is media censorship. Uh, censorship. Yeah. When actually there is a certain inequality here that we that we ought to address. Mm-hmm. You know, that we ought to get everyone to read up enough to a certain level of literacy where they don't need to, uh, they don't worry about whether there is, mm-hmm. but, where it, but worry about how to find out, find out whether there isn't, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because they are at a, I feel like there's a, there's a, there's a section of the internet where there are people who just feel that something is wrong, but don't know what's wrong. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the thing that I think that's the that's I think that's those are the people that basically basically spark this entire conversation that we are having today, mm. right? Mm. Because I think most of, for for the typical Singaporean, right, they may not know the resources are there, but if you tell them they're there, they know how to get. Mm. Yeah. But there's this section of society that don't know they're there, don't know where to get, and very angry. Yeah. And but I angry think- at at something that may not exist. Yeah, and I you think know? that's that's the the probably the group that will be like very very vehement that like yeah. media freedom does exist. Like. Yeah, the, that's the group that will think that what we are saying right is like ah oh, these are young people they won't understand. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, they uh, will <laughs> take uh um umbrage. Yeah, uh, they will take definitely take umbrage, and this is used correctly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, take, they will definitely take umbrage and offense right at what we are saying right now. Mm. Uh, they will one, so you be prepared for it. Uh, 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 you have yeah. to just be a bit more steely and then go like, oh, okay, lo. Actually, okay, lah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, actually, oh, we handle it pretty nice, okay. Yeah. And, and we handle it not bad. Handle yeah. it not bad. I have, I've seen it like happen with uh, Rice Media articles so many times. People say like, oh, so it's quite clear now which side you're on. Oof. Yeah, like that, lo. Big oof. Yeah. People expect Rice Media to be left. Yeah. Yeah, but we're not left. We're centrist. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so we see the good and the bad. Uh, and when it's bad, we question. If it's good, we also question. Can we? Are we asked? Can it be better? Mm. Yeah. But it is always about like uh like you you you're, you're talking about privilege, right? Yeah. When you when when you think back about like the auntie who pushed the cut, uh, mm. right? Uh, and and if she if no one speaks up for her, if we as people who are smart, educated, right, and we don't speak up for her, then who will speak up for her? Mm. So we need to not just be angry on her behalf. We need to be angry right, and be moved to change. Yeah. I think that's the toughest part. The, sec- the second part is the toughest part. Mm. And like being able to like harness, harness, I don't know harness is the right word, but like channel the anger in a more productive yeah. way. Yeah. And so many community groups are doing it. So many. Yeah. All the mutual aid groups are doing it. Uh, like the migrant workers groups are, uh, um, the migrant workers group are doing it. Uh, LGBTQ groups are doing it. Mm. So many people yeah. are doing it and you can see this, the, the soul of a city, right? The soul of a city, right? Yeah. Lies in, uh, in uh, in lies there there are three things that makes that makes up the soul of the city. It's empathy, compassion, uh, empathy, compassion, and passion. Mm. Yeah, those are the things that those those are the three, three things that, that I think makes up the city, and it's something that Singapore has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when COVID hits, a lot of That's people true. yeah a lot of people come up and help. You know, we can we can we can do like a laundry list of like all yeah. the initiatives that mm-hmm. have happened, or like the number of people who donate their Singapore Rediscover vouchers yeah, to yeah, migrant yeah. workers, people who do all these things. So there is a little bit of hope right there, lah. So if yeah. anything, right, just be moved to change, or and then yeah, be angry, but be moved to change as well. Mm. I think there's a nice way to sum it up. To be honest, it is. It is. And with that, guys. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. Once again, episode we have come to the opinion. end of today's episode. Thank you so much, Zad, for joining us for two You're episodes. Two episodes. If you want yes. Zad back, hey, <laughs> get in the comment section. If you want Zad back, you, not, not up to us, up to you. 
Up to you. It's definitely not up to him either. I got nothing else to say. I'm done. <laughs> it's not up to him either. It's up to you guys. <laughs> Actually, right, if you do want to come, if you do want me to come back, right, uh, yeah. very interesting for a topic that you all haven't talk, touch, touched on, right? Uh-huh. And most uh-huh. people don't don't ask us also, right? It's like how we do our lifestyle and subculture section. Mm. Like, how do you think I find all these places, all these people, all these strange, strange people? Mm. That's an like, interesting thing. There's a story, okay? Yes. Just to end it, like, I know you all uh, do the goodbyes every day. Like, no, yeah, no, no, see, uh, there's a story that we did, uh, if you all if, if go and look, right, about the, uh, the, 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 the the religious guy who does exorcisms. What? It's which faith? Our, which, uh, 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 Islam. Oh. So one of my writers followed him to an exorcism. Wow. To a seance and everything. Yeah. What in the world? Yeah. So she said like, so she described the thing. Uh, so it is in, so the article is, if you want to look, right, it's called uh, Ustaz Fadli Rosli. Just type Fadli, F-A-D-H-L-Y, Rosli. Then you will see the article. Mm. So how did that happen? Right? Yeah, exactly. So it's the subculture section of rice, right? That people really love, right? Mm. It's crazy really, that you, you manage to find these communities. Even... Like on Carousel, right? There's a yeah. thriving black magic. Have, 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 yeah. Have, 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 right. have. So Do you know what I know? I went, to, I went to search black magic uh, they sell camera, the right? Then they come out black magic, come yeah. out. <laughs> so my writer actually interviewed someone who sells that. Ooh. Yeah. So there is a thriving market for black magic items on Carousel. The question is, is why? That's cool. Yeah. So those are like, how do we get those stories? That is cool to figure yeah. out. But... Guys, that's if you guys want it. Yeah. Leave it down in the comments down below. Teaser and trailer come out already. Come out already. Then we have him. <laughs> we have him in the middle of the episode. He'll come back. He'll eat the 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 half the the bento food again. <laughs> that could be better, but that's great still. <laughs> The bento food is a right of passage. It's a right of passage. <laughs> but oh, yes. okay, okay. I love it. I love Every it. Every guest is the bento food. Every uh... guest. And then second time, then you can eat bento food. But okay, first time, okay. must be bento food. Must okay. be that bento. Noted. <laughs> but yes. second time, you come back with me. So, so everyone wants you to come back. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much, Zan. And thank All right. you guys so much for watching this episode. Yes. Uh, please, yeah. Happy Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese was New Year. Was that last week? And like, I mean, it, Chinese New Year, 15 days lah. Technically, yeah. Happy Chinese New Year. Yeah. Then. And so remember to tune in to the Singapore budget on February 18th. Ah, yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Uh, which will be, by the time this video come out, in about uh, 10 days. Ish. Maybe one, I uh, don't know. Lah. But no, yes. la, what? Two weeks. La, two weeks. In about ah, two weeks. Are, yeah. Lazy to calculate. Thank you guys mm. so much for watching today's episode. Stay safe. Don't get COVID. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.